Hello everyone, welcome back to Oni-chan, Goku and Vegeta are currently training with Whis. Suddenly, Mai arrives to report that Future Trunks has gone missing, and a stranger has appeared. He introduces himself as Fu and says that Trunks is being held captive on a prison planet, where the most dangerous criminals from across the universes are kept. Goku immediately teleports there to rescue Trunks. Suddenly, another Goku appears. He immediately transforms into Super Saiyan 4 and attacks Goku. Goku immediately transforms into Super Saiyan Blue, and both of them unleash the Kamehameha, but they feel that they are all being held captive. As for Fu, he stood there laughing, he said, Welcome to being imprisoned on this penal planet. This is a place Fu created solely for experimentation. He gathers warriors from various universes to have them fight, Fu said, If you want to leave here, you must collect all seven Dragon Balls. At this point, Goku explained that he came from a different dimension and had given him a Dragon Ball. So, Fu returned to monitor everyone. It turned out that he was holding a being called the Evil Saiyan Captive. He immediately located Goku's whereabouts, causing Vegeta to sense an evil aura emanating from him. When Goku attacked him, he became tainted with evil ki, causing him to lose control and attack Vegeta. A stray bullet ended up near Mai, but Trunks arrived just in time to save her. It was only then that Fu informed them that this evildoer was named Cumber. Suddenly, Cooler also appeared, and Goku had to confront him. Cooler knew that his younger brother, Frieza, had achieved the golden form, so he attempted to surpass his own limits. Surprisingly, he was able to transform into Golden Cooler as well. He gave Goku a hard hit and fired an energy ball towards Cumber, helping Goku regain his composure. However, Cumber remained unscathed and unleashed his power to deal with them all. Seeing Trunks in grave danger, Mai handed Goku and Vegeta a pair of Patara earrings. Upon seeing Trunks in a dangerous situation, so both of them merged back into Vegito, he immediately transformed into Super Saiyan Blue to attack Cumber. Surprisingly, they managed to injure him, but he felt excited instead, because he found a strong opponent. Goku then used the Kaioken to fight against him. While Cooler was still observing from a distance, Vegito unleashed a Kamehameha attack on Cumber but he remained unfazed. Suddenly, he fired a bright moon-like sphere. It helped him transform into a golden great ape. Vegito was drained of energy at this point, causing them to diffuse. Fu was very pleased watching everyone fight. Goku and Vegeta realized his weakness was in his tail, so they immediately attacked his tail. However, he was too strong, and even Cooler, who was watching, got caught up in the battle. At this moment, Goku was beaten down by him but transformed into Super Saiyan Blue to resist. No matter how they attacked Cumber, they couldn't harm him. Suddenly, Fu realized that the planet's ceiling chains were being destroyed by Cumber, so he immediately looked for Cumber, and he drew a sword. Just one strike made Cumber return to normal. Then he left, allowing the rest to continue the battle. Goku transformed into Super Saiyan God and continued to fight Cumber. However, Cumber was still too strong and fired a dark energy sphere at Goku. As for Fu, when he returned, he found his laboratory had been destroyed which made him angry. Meanwhile, Goku was still taking a beating. Just when Cumber was about to finish him off, Goku and Vegeta in their Saiyan 4 forms reappeared and said, this time, I will be your opponent, you're all going up together. They realized that he was too strong, Goku and Vegeta decided to fuse, and so Vegito's Saiyan 4 was born. With this power, they could finally overpower Cumber, but he still wouldn't give in, continuing to battle with them. Despite that, Vegito's power was still greater, so he blew Cumber away. Luckily, their fusion time had also run out. Suddenly, Fu appeared again, saying, the seal has been broken again, and realizing that it was Goku who had destroyed his lab. So he unleashed his power to attack them. Goku and Vegeta continued to fight against him. Unexpectedly, Cumber was still alive. He wanted to continue the battle. Fu, seeing that they had played enough, so he immediately severed the space and left. Cumber continued to shoot energy balls towards Goku and Vegeta. While everyone was trying to resist, then Goku finally woke up, and knocked away Cumber's energy ball, they were wondering, what is this state? Vegeta explained that it was Ultra Instinct, at this point, Goku had become extremely powerful and easily overwhelmed Cumber with just a few basic moves. Sensing the unfavorable situation, the entire group decided to leave, Goku then finished with a Kamehameha, ultimately defeating Cumber, suddenly, Zamasu appeared, and he quickly took Cumber away. Goku was left alone in the collapsing prison dimension. Meanwhile, Vegeta's group had safely returned to their universe. Goku and Vegeta, in the other universe, 
decided to leave, however, Supreme Kai from Universe 6 arrived with news that Universe 6 was under attack. Vegeta decided to help them. On this side of the battle, Hit, Khalifla, and Kale were fighting against the two twin sisters. Both of them are very strong. They could fight evenly with Hit. All of Hit's attacks couldn't harm the twin sisters, and they could even regenerate their injuries on their own. Both of them rushed to attack Hit's group. Luckily, Vegeta and Trunks arrived just in time. On another front, Zamasu and Hearts were plotting to overthrow Zeno-sama. Meanwhile, seeing that Vegeta seemed challenging to deal with, they merged into the bodies of Kale and Khalifla, gaining control over them. So, they attacked Vegeta and Trunks. It turns out that these two twin sisters are a special type of creature that can take over the bodies of others. Vegeta's group continued to attack them, and Vegeta was gathering all his energy to deliver a decisive blow. But the two sisters managed to break free from the bodies of Khalifla and Kale in time. Suddenly, they were all pinned to the ground, and it turned out that Hearts had arrived, bringing with him a large chunk of ice. He said, this is a seed of destruction for the universe, it will help us defeat Zeno and all the destroyers. Surprisingly, he could even read Hit's thoughts and knew that Jiren was the strongest in all universes. Meanwhile, Jiren was fighting the evil doer Cumber. Meanwhile, Goku had been rescued by the Grand Minister. They then transported Vegeta and Trunks to Universe 11. Suddenly, Orin rushed in and took control of Vegeta's body, attacking Trunks. He was excited about the immense power of this body. On the other hand, Jiren was still battling Cumber but was unable to overpower him. Unexpected, Hearts had created immense pressure that forced Jiren to lie on the ground. Upon seeing that he could still resist, Hearts ordered Orin to fight him. Cumber said, he's my prey, you should go to Universe 3. However, Jiren was still too powerful. Even though they attacked together, they couldn't make a single strand of Jiren's hair fall either. When Trunks was in danger, Goku appeared with the Grand Minister. At this point, he was able to freely use Ultra Instinct. The Grand Minister said, you handle everything here. They realized that Goku now had the power of a deity, and with a single punch, he knocked Orin off of Vegeta. At this moment, Goku approached Hearts to exchange affectionate glances. However, Kami and Orin still wanted to fight Goku. With Goku's current Ultra Instinct, the twin sisters couldn't even pluck a single armpit hair from him, realizing that Goku was too strong, so they decided to merge. But they still couldn't match Goku, Hearts summoned Lags, who was encased in ice, and she rushed to attack Goku. So, Goku used all his strength to destroy that ice platform. At this point, Lags revealed herself, she continuously attacked Goku and defeated him. When Vegeta tried to intervene, she blocked him, so he immediately unleashed his most powerful state. While Goku had regained consciousness, he saw Vegeta fighting against Kamiorin, and Trunks was battling to protect Goku. At this point, Kamiorin was no longer a match for Vegeta. Jiren is still fighting Zamasu, but it turns out his body is immortal, so he cannot be defeated. Vegeta managed to fight Kami and Orin to the point where they had to separate. However, Hearts ordered Lags to go to Universe 3 to assist Cumber. At this point, Hearts read Goku's thoughts and realized that Goku's Ultra Instinct was not yet perfected. So, he continued to use gravitational pressure to push them all down to the ground. Fortunately, the Supreme Kai appeared just in time to rescue everyone and take them away. Hearts had gathered enough energy from Universe 11, and they couldn't even make a single hair of Jiren fall, so there was no need to fight Jiren anymore. Hearts immediately captured him and left. Fu had transformed Cooler into a cyborg. At this moment, Hearts and his gang had arrived in Goku's Universe 7, so they all joined forces to fight against him. Vegeta continued to battle Kami and Orin, while Trunks was battling Zamasu alone. Android 17 and Piccolo arrived to help him. Goku, on the other hand, was facing a tough challenge from Hearts. Meanwhile, Fu sent the android Cooler to Universe 3 to fight Cumber and Lags. Cooler was incredibly strong and completely overwhelmed Cumber. He could even transform into Golden Cooler. However, when he was about to finish Cumber off, then he exploded because his body couldn't handle this power. On the Universe 7 side, Hearts realized that these guys weren't giving up. So he decided to unleash his power. At this point, he continuously rushed in to attack Goku. But Super Saiyan wasn't enough to stop him. So, Goku transformed into Super Saiyan Blue. Goku attacked and fired energy blasts at him. But with a wave of his hand, Hearts effortlessly redirected all of it back at Goku. He realized that Hearts still wasn't truly serious. So Goku rushed forward, pouring all of his power into a Kamehameha attack. Meanwhile, Android 17 and Piccolo had defeated Kamiorin, causing him to self-destruct. 
Android 17 created a protective barrier, ensuring their safety. Goku thought he had defeated Hearts, but to his surprise, Hearts remained unharmed. It was only at this point that Hearts truly unleashed his full power. Hearts created cubic blocks around his body and swiftly charged at Goku. Overpowering him, Hearts realized that Kamiorin was being surrounded. Hearts decided to suppress the universe seed and implanted it into Kamiorin. This made Vegeta on the other side feel the tremendous key flow as well. At this point, he transformed into a true monster and immediately sought revenge on Android 17 and Piccolo. With just one strike, he destroyed the entire city. Their attacks were now ineffective against him, and they were defeated with a single blow. Goku also regained consciousness and rushed in to confront him. He decided to continue using Ultra Instinct. At this point, all of Kamiorin's attacks were blocked by Goku. Goku's power far surpassed his. He couldn't even land a single blow on Goku. Goku then grabbed his beard and slammed him to the ground. Everyone saw an opportunity for victory, so they all joined in attacking Kamiorin. In the end, with just one strike, Goku shattered his energy core, causing him to self-destruct. Suddenly, Hearts picked up the Universe Seed and said, This is its perfected form. It turned out he had only used Kamiorin to perfect the Universe Seed. He then began to merge with the Universe Seed. Vegeta immediately attacked, but he was stopped by the new Zamasu. This Zamasu aimed to create a world without mortals, where only the Divine would exist absolutely. He rushed to attack Goku's group, because Goku had no more strength left. He could only be captured by him. It's fortunate that Jiren arrived just in time, with a bald head like yours. You think you can stop me? Unexpectedly, Hit also showed up and delivered a punch to him. So all three of them joined forces and charged in. However, they were too late. Hearts had already merged with the Universe Seed. Surprisingly, he betrayed Zamasu and made him disintegrate. Because Hearts had reached a godly level of power, the small orbs on Hearts' body started attacking Goku's group and he promptly delivered a punch to each of them, causing them to fall to the ground. They realized the immense power he possessed. Goku, however, refused to give up and continued his assault on hearts. But Goku was knocked back before he could even reach him, as were Jiren and Hit. At this point, hearts summoned a gigantic cube that crushed the entire group to the ground. Only Jiren and Hit had the strength to get back up and attack him. Goku then said to Vegeta, We need to fuse, even though they didn't want to, they had to fuse to save the universe. Vegeta reluctantly agreed to merge with Goku. So, the warrior Gogeta was born. He couldn't help but laugh, saying, What game are you all playing? But Gogeta just smiled confidently. So Hearts immediately attacked the remaining fighters, to prevent anyone from interfering with his battle. At this moment, Gogeta transformed into Super Saiyan Blue. He created a massive column of energy, with just one punch. He was knocked back. Hearts realized the situation was not good. So Hearts released the spinning cubic blocks around his arms. But Gogeta was now too powerful, continuously pummeling Hearts mercilessly. Hearts said, with this strength, you could defeat Zeno, why not cooperate with me? But Gogeta refused, so Hearts continued to use gravity, pulling a massive meteorite towards Earth. Everyone realized that he wanted to destroy the planet, but Gogeta remained confident and unleashed his full power, attacking the meteorite, causing it to come to a halt. Hearts continued to increase his power, pushing the meteorite towards Gogeta, so he continued to unleash the Kamehameha, with both Hit and Jiren coming to his aid. This caused the meteorite to start breaking apart. Gogeta then charged towards Hearts, delivering a powerful punch that shattered the crystal on his chest, causing the power of the universe seed to disappear. Finally, Hearts dissolved away. Grand Minister felt that his trust in Goku was justified. As for Jiren, he asked, why didn't you use this power in the Tournament of Power? Suddenly, they were separated, and Vegeta said, because we didn't want to fuse with him, in another universe, Goku's team was battling the Lord of Darkness, Goku and Vegeta fused into Vegito level 4, and his power surpassed the Lord of Darkness completely, Supreme Kai helped Trunks release his sword, and he was able to defeat the Lord of Darkness, the castle of the Lord of Darkness began to crumble, Supreme Kai's bird transformed into a giant and destroyed the Lord of Darkness's castle. In the end, everyone was safe. Goku and Vegeta then unfused. At this moment, Fu was just born. His parents, wanting to save him, took him to another universe. As for Supreme Kai, she announced that the bird had disappeared. So Trunks and Pan decided to help her find the bird. Surprisingly, Goku had already caught it. They wondered where this foolish bird had come from. Suddenly, Trunks and Pan arrived to take the bird back because they needed to maintain the time order. At this moment, 
All the destruction gods of the twelve universes also appeared. They came here to destroy this bird. But it turned out the bird could erase Beerus's destruction. Beerus explained to everyone that there was a mysterious bird that would destroy the entire universe. However, Trunks argued that Toki Toki would never do such a thing. So Pan immediately helped it run away. The destroyer gods thought they were being betrayed. So they all tried to use destruction to deal with the group. However, Beerus stopped them, saying that he would handle the situation himself. Goku and Vegeta understood that they had to fight. Goku said, it's been a while since I fought you, hasn't it? As for Fu, he was observing everyone, and it turns out he was the one holding the disaster bird, on the other side. Even though all three of them ganged up on Beerus, it didn't phase him. But Krillin noticed that there were up to 11 destroyer gods with powers similar to Beerus. Suddenly, Goku and Vegeta from another universe arrived, leaving everyone puzzled about where these two came from. They said that this wasn't the time to fight. At this moment, in the sky, numerous space routes appeared continuing to absorb nutrients, causing planets to disappear. So, the destroyer gods returned to look after their own universes, leaving only Goku's and Beerus's groups. This time, Fu appeared, he said, my bird is the real disaster bird, and these roots were from Heart's universe seed. He planned to create a completely new universe. Suddenly, the power of everyone was once again being absorbed by these roots. Beerus immediately used his godly key to halt their growth and instructed everyone to take action. On the other side, Fu had gathered all of Goku's previous enemies. Goku and Vegeta were searching for Fu when suddenly a figure identical to Goku appeared. They recognized him as Tur Les, Vegeta said. They are the ones who once attacked Earth. At this point, Vegeta and Goku also transformed into Super Saiyan Blue, unleashing their power. It turns out they were granted power by the Universe Tree allowing them to contend with Goku and Vegeta. Meanwhile, Trunks found Fu. On the other side, Goku and Vegeta were facing Dr. Willow. Unexpectedly, he was able to shift his attack and catch Vegeta off guard. Even their Super Saiyan 3 forms couldn't defeat him. So, they decided to transform into Super Saiyan 4 and delivered a powerful blow. But it only vaporized the magma there. As for Dr. Willow, he remained unharmed. He then said, I've finished analyzing, and left. It turns out he was just analyzing their power. As for Fu, he released the bird, preventing Goku and Vegeta from moving. Pan's bird tried to come to their rescue but was captured by Fu, seeing that the plan was complete. So, they all left. As for Dr. Willow at this point, thanks to his analysis of Goku and Vegeta, he successfully revived the underworld demon Janemba. Even when Goku and Vegeta transformed into Super Saiyan 4, they couldn't defeat him, with just one attack. Both of them were immobilized. Fortunately, Goku's group had shifted dimensions to this location, so both of them transformed into Saiyan Blue and attacked him. Dr. Willow continued to analyze the data and realized that this opponent was very formidable. So, the entire group teamed up to fight him. But no matter how both Goku's fought, he remained very strong. Suddenly, two individuals appeared, freezing his legs and knocking him away. Trunks recognized them as Salsa and Putin, the two antagonistic characters they had previously battled against. They offered to show Goku how to destroy the universe tree, and show him the situation of other universes. Suddenly, Janemba attacked them, even managing to teleport his punch. Salsa then advised Goku, you should use the technique that once defeated him. So Goku told everyone to transmit energy to him. While Salsa and Putin were holding Janemba back, Goku and Vegeta had gathered enough energy. Both of them had now surpassed their limits, easily overpowering Janemba and finishing him off with the Dragon Fist technique. This made Dr. Willow furious, because this technique was not in his data. At this point, Putin teleported everyone to the location of the universe tree. Vegeta jumped up and unleashed a massive energy sphere to destroy it. But the universe tree absorbed it all. Suddenly, Fu reappeared, infuriating Vegeta, who rushed to attack him. He realized that Fu was using Cumber's energy, and Fu was using Cumber as a power source. Both Vegeta and Goku lost control but their instincts drove them to attack Fu relentlessly. So, he had to dispel the evil ki controlling them. At this moment, Goku gave Vegeta a pair of Patara earrings, saying it was the only way to defeat Fu. So, both of them fused into Vegito and transformed into Super Saiyan Blue. Meanwhile, Goku's other group was captured by a woman named Toa, who claimed to be created by Fu to replace his parents and help him become the Lord of Darkness. She absorbed the darkness within them and pushed them into another dimension. Vegito's power completely overwhelmed Fu, so he decided to unleash his dark power and fight back. However, 
Vegito remained unfazed and countered his attacks with full force. Fu realized that he was no match for Vegito. Suddenly, the universe tree started glowing, and it seemed like it would create a new universe. However, it withered and returned life to the other universes. This was because Beerus had used the Dragon Balls to wish for the removal of the universe tree's existence. This made Fu extremely frustrated, thinking that his plan had failed. Fortunately, Toa had returned and provided him with the dark energy she had absorbed, granting him more power. Fu transformed into the Lord of Darkness and attempted to resurrect the universe tree. As he was about to revive the universe tree, Vegito rushed in to stop him. However, Fu's power had significantly increased at this point, allowing him to stand his ground against Vegito. With Tawa's interference, Fu continued his efforts to resurrect the universe tree. Suddenly, the dimensional rift cracked open again, and Vegito's Super Saiyan 4 reappeared. It turned out that the two sorcerers had helped him return. Vegito wasted no time and delivered a powerful punch to Fu. His Super Saiyan 4 power was overwhelming, forcing Fu to create a spatial prison to contain them. At this moment, Brawly burst in from the outside and launched a relentless assault on Vegito. After several failed attempts, Brawly became even more powerful, even transforming into Super Saiyan 4. So Vegito Blue also came to help him, seeing that Brawly could handle both of them on his own. Fu continued his plan to revive the Universe Tree. Eventually, the Universe Tree was reborn. Vegito Blue immediately separated Brawly, so that Vegito Level 4 could block Fu, while he was holding a new universe in his hands. Vegito immediately attacked him, realizing that he needed time to birth his universe, so Vegito continued to relentlessly attack, with Demigra assisting by freezing the time of both of them. Meanwhile, Goku had been transported back to Earth. At this moment, Goku was running from the pursuit of two spaceships, but they still couldn't catch him which made Frieza lose his patience, so they had to intervene. Frieza and Cooler both rushed to attack Goku, thinking they could defeat him. However, Hearts appeared to aid Goku. He stood on Goku's side after escaping from Hell. Frieza and Cooler were furious and launched their attacks at him. Goku was planning to use his Ultra Instinct form. Frieza had become too familiar with it, so he attacked Goku with a massive energy sphere. Unexpectedly, Goku returned to his Ultra Instinct form and immediately defeated Frieza knocking him to the ground. Suddenly, he received power from the Dark Dragon Ball, so the two Frieza brothers immediately counterattacked them. While they were attacking Goku and Hearts, Brawly appeared and swiftly defeated Goku and Hearts. Frieza and Cooler then rushed in to attack Brawly, but they were also defeated by him. In the meantime, Crimson was still observing. He is none other than Black Goku from another timeline. Seeing the Frieza brothers defeated, suddenly, a warrior in a black cloak arrived to take Cooler's Dragon Ball, Frieza attacked him, but Frieza was also defeated and had the Dragon Ball taken from him. When the warrior in the black cloak left, Crimson appeared. Crimson felt that this wasn't the place to fight Goku, so he instructed both of them to go to the upper area where Vegeta was fighting. It turns out that he was being attacked by Cumber. Turles found this battle very interesting, so he launched an attack on Cumber and punched Vegeta in the face. Turles continued to transmit his evil key to Vegeta because he intended to bring out the darkness within Vegeta, however, Vegeta managed to control it and turned that power into his own. He relentlessly attacked the traitor Turles because he felt that Turles was insulting the Saiyan race. Cumber was also excited to challenge Vegeta, so Vegeta showed him his true power. Surprisingly, this attack made Cumber collapse. Meanwhile, Goku was still fighting Crimson, and Crimson had caught Goku. Vegeta tried to save Goku, but he was exhausted. When Crimson was about to eliminate Vegeta first, Goku unleashed his Ultra Instinct. So, Crimson turned back to attack Goku, but no matter how he attacked, he couldn't hit Goku. Realizing that he was no match for Goku, Crimson destroyed the entire castle. Goku's group planned to teleport away immediately, but Goku couldn't sense anyone's key. Fortunately, Cell appeared to help Goku's group and teleported them to another location. At this point, Shroom informed Goku's group of Crimson's plan to become the ruler of the world. They were fortunate to have Cell's assistance, even though Cell still harbored resentment towards Goku's group. However, for the sake of his own ambitions, Cell decided to cooperate. Goku and Vegeta couldn't fully control their new powers, so Shroom created a training space for them. Suddenly, Dr. Willow's team found this place and he unleashed his power in front of Gohan's group. Gohan immediately launched an attack on him, and the two engaged in a fierce battle. While Crimson was planning to dominate humanity, he was interrupted by a warrior in a black cloak, 
They engaged in a fierce battle, but Crimson proved to be stronger and continuously defeated him. When he was about to deal with the warrior in the black cloak, Goku and Vegeta returned. Both of them fought against Crimson, and Goku unleashed a powerful attack to finish him off. Suddenly, Crimson absorbed the planet's energy, evolving to a new level of power. Vegeta rushed forward to attack Crimson, but he was quickly defeated. Even Frieza and Cooler attempted to attack Crimson, but they couldn't harm him, seeing them always hindering his plans. Crimson summoned Sin Shenron to deal with Frieza. Cumber saw that he was very powerful, so he enthusiastically rushed in to attack. Hearts told Goku and Vegeta that they had to defeat Crimson quickly because his power was continuously increasing. There was only one way to defeat him, which was to fuse into a new form. Even though Vegeta didn't want to fuse with Goku, they had no other option, so they reluctantly fused into Gogeta. Gogeta appeared and punched Crimson in the face. Despite Crimson's confidence in his power, he was no match for Gogeta's current strength. Gogeta delivered a powerful punch that sent Crimson crashing to the ground. At this point, Crimson became enraged and increased his power even more. But Gogeta's punch had completely defeated him. The warrior in the black cloak had obtained all seven Dragon Balls, freeing everyone from the predicament. When Goku returned to the universe tree, he saw Fu, who now appeared like a child, which surprised everyone because he had merged with Dori, the bird, and it was thanks to that bird that Fu managed to escape from the time freezing trap. At this point, Fu's power had reached a different level. Suddenly, Brawly rushed in to attack, but Hearts and Cumber appeared to stop him. Cumber kept attacking Brawly, but he was eventually sent flying by Brawly's power. Hearts also rushed in to hold Brawly back. While Fu was using his new power to attack Goku and Vegeta, they had to fuse together, so Gogeta Blue and Gogeta Super Saiyan 4 appeared. Fu then attacked them, but it wasn't enough to defeat the combined might of the two Gogetas. Fu continued to increase his power and unleashed a powerful attack that separated them. He then opened a dimensional portal and tried to suck both Vegeta into it. This would have prevented Goku from fusing again, making it difficult for them to defeat Fu. Fortunately, Supreme Kai arrived to help them. She instructed both Gokus to concentrate their energy together so that she could transmit additional power to them. Thanks to this, the power of both of them increased. Goku then used the Kamehameha technique to attack him. Fu thought that attack was very powerful, but he was not affected at all. Suddenly, Fu continued to absorb more power from the universe tree, which greatly increased his strength. However, Goku seized control of his power and even absorbed it. Surprisingly, Goku could control the power and make it his own. Both of them engaged in a fierce battle, but Goku was incredibly strong, completely overpowering Fu. This infuriated Fu, who refused to accept defeat. So they both unleashed their full power and launched a decisive attack, but Goku blew away Fu's attack. Defeating him, Vegeta and the bird were also released and returned. In the end, Goku's team emerged victorious, and they were transported back to their home planet. At this moment, Supreme Kai Eos formulated a plan. They gathered all the warriors from the 12 universes to participate in a space-time battle. When the 12 teams had to start a survival battle, in order to win, they had to capture the flying time fairies, or defeat seven members of other teams. The team that won would receive fantastic rewards. They were all transported to various arenas with different terrains. Goku's opponent is Goku from another timeline. But while they were talking, they were suddenly attacked. So, both of them had to cooperate to defeat their attackers. Meanwhile, everyone else was engaged in fierce battles with formidable opponents. Whether evil or ruthless, all of them were determined to win. Yamcha, on the other hand, was running away from Frieza because he didn't have the strength to fight him. As time was running out, the warriors were fighting more fiercely than ever. At this point, both Gokus were eager to test their strength against each other, so they unleashed all their power to begin their battle. Meanwhile, Yamcha was hiding in the bushes, but unexpectedly, he ran into a time fairy. Thanks to this encounter, Goku's team emerged victorious and was transported back to the arena. However, this time, only three teams were allowed to return. As the defeated teams were eliminated from the space, Trunks, infuriated, immediately launched an attack on the Black Warrior, who swiftly retaliated. However, Trunks was no match for his opponent and was knocked to the ground. At this point, Trunks decided to give it his all, and the two engaged in a fierce exchange of blows. Unexpectedly, time came to a halt, and Supreme Kai Eos appeared to intervene, halting both combatants, and she explained the rules of the life or death battle to everyone. At this point, Gohan and Piccolo were transported to the planet Namek, 
where they had to battle the Namekian warriors of Supreme Kai Eos. Meanwhile, Vegeta and Yamcha arrived on the Crystal Planet. The girl explained the rules of the game to them, but Vegeta wasn't interested and attacked her. Both Hit and Vegeta engaged in a battle, but Yamcha was not a match for either of them, so Vegeta stepped in to help him. The girl mentioned that Vegeta wouldn't be able to break her defense, which infuriated Vegeta, and he attacked, eventually breaking through her shield. Hit had captured the girl, but suddenly, he was attacked. It turned out to be Yamcha, who wanted to rescue the girl because she was so beautiful. Seeing Yamcha's bravery in attempting to rescue her, the girl was moved, and she decided that she would marry Yamcha. On the other hand, Trunks was still in battle with the man in the black cloak. Surprise, he turned out to be future Gohan who had been working with Supreme Kai Eos to increase his power to protect his loved ones. He couldn't let Trunks interfere with his mission, so they continued to battle. Despite Trunks' attempts to reason with him, Gohan used a Kamehameha attack against Trunks. But Trunks managed to overpower Gohan. At this moment, Goku and Jiren were in a battle with a very powerful Saiyan, who turned out to be none other than Bardock, Goku's father. However, Goku had reached a level of power equal to that of the gods making Bardock no match for him. Bardock then gathered all his strength for one final attack, while Goku countered with a Kamehameha. Despite Bardock's strength, he was ultimately defeated by Goku. On Kronoa's side, she was trying to find Supreme Kai Eos to reclaim the time scrolls, so she mixed all the time scrolls together and put them in a box. Then, both of them teleported outside to battle each other. Eos unleashed his true power, and Kronoa did the same to prepare for the fight. Both of them were ready for battle. Suddenly, Eos unleashed an extremely powerful attack, forcing Kronoa to defend herself. At this moment, Eos was incredibly furious. Goku appeared with the guidance of the Time Fairy. Even though he was unaware of the situation, he asked Eos not to erase those who had lost the battle, but Eos refused. She believed it was her duty to maintain the balance of time and space. Goku realized that talking was futile, so he had no choice but to engage in combat with Eos. Despite using Ultra Instinct to attack, Eos was also very powerful, and Goku couldn't land a hit on her. Eos began to counterattack, ensnaring Goku in her trap. As Eos prepared to unleash her finishing blow, Goku used a Kamehameha as a decoy. Goku immediately teleported to AOS's location and unleashed an incredibly powerful attack, shattering AOS's temporal and spatial boundary. Supreme Kai Eos decided that she had to eliminate Goku. Meanwhile, inside the universe, the demon lord was ambushed by Demigra, causing him to fall and absorb his power. Back with Goku and Eos, as they were preparing for a serious battle, a massive fireball fell from the sky. Goku quickly saved Kronoa, while Eos took the full force of the attack, leaving her exhausted. It turns out that Demigra had returned and taken Eos's time-space box. He was determined to become the Lord of Darkness and summoned the Shadow Dragons. This dragon was very confident in his own power, so, he quickly created an energy sphere to attack Goku, but Gogeta arrived just in time to intercept and help him. When the shadow dragon saw Gogeta, he became terrified, and Gogeta humiliated him. The shadow dragon then desperately attacked Gogeta, but Gogeta only used one finger to counter the shadow dragon, making him extremely angry. At this point, the shadow dragon continued to be repeatedly defeated by Gogeta, he persisted in his attacks against Gogeta, but his strikes couldn't harm him. The Shadow Dragon realized that Gogeta was far superior, prompting him to unleash the power of the Seven Dragon Balls, creating an immense energy source. In response, Gogeta also decided to use his full power to counter the attack. Even though the Shadow Dragon exerted all his strength, he was ultimately overpowered and defeated by Gogeta. Eos began to sense that Demigra was very dangerous. Suddenly, he continued to harness the power of darkness and summoned other evil beings, even enhancing their strength. This would be a battle of darkness. Kronoa urged everyone to gather their strength and resist him, but it was all in vain, as Demigra had now acquired supreme power. Suddenly, Brawly reappeared, so Gogeta immediately attacked to stop him. Thus, both of them engaged in continuous combat. Gogeta created an energy sphere to block the rain of bullets from Brawly, while Demigra showcased his own formidable power. He then grabbed Eos and struck her in the abdomen, even hitting her in the face, so Goku immediately used the Kamehameha to block it. Unexpectedly, Demigra created a spatial rift to absorb Goku's attack, and then he redirected it back at him. Goku attempted to evade, but Kronoa was behind him, so he had to block the attack. Due to Demigra's overwhelming power, 
Goku was blown away. Seizing this opportunity, Eos used her time maze to trap him. However, Demigra easily broke the time-space confinement and unleashed his power. Goku was no longer a match for him. On another side, Frieza was surrounded. While Yamcha and his new love interest combined their powers, they created a massive energy sphere and launched it straight at Frieza. At this moment, the two of them began to think about their future together and even marriage. Meanwhile, Gohan was under attack by Cell. Although Trunks and Gohan were very powerful, they were still not a match for their opponents. So, the two of them decided to join forces to defeat them. As for Goku, he had been captured by Demigra, who was about to finish him off. However, Vegeta appeared just in time to stop Demigra and rescue Goku. Pranoa came up with a new plan for their team. It was for Eos to use all of her strength to hold off Demigra. However, he managed to unleash his power and break free. Just then, Goku and Vegeta fused into Vegito, and immediately counterattacked Demigra. And so, the battle of ultimate power officially began. Today's video ends here. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel to support Oni-chan in future videos. Thank you for watching, and much love to all of you.